Uh, today, a Minnesota race for Congress is in turmoil after a candidate suddenly died. Paula Overby was running for Congress in Minnesota's 2nd District under the legal marijuana party. She died this morning after being hospitalized for a heart issue. So what's next? Esme Murphy takes us through what happens to the thousands of votes that have been cast and what, if anything, will change come Election Day. For the second time in two election years, the legal marijuana party candidate has died weeks before the election. In 2020, Adam Weeks died but remained on the ballot and got 24,000 votes. Angie Craig ended up beating Tyler Kistner. This year, it's a rematch. Even before Overby's death, the stakes were high. First, this is one of a handful of districts nationwide that is considered a toss-up and could decide which party controls the U.S. House. And secondly, this district has a history of supporting third-party candidates, which some analysts believe has affected results. In 2016, Republican Jason Lewis beat Democrat Angie Craig by just 9,000 votes. Paula Overby was a third-party candidate that year, too, and got nearly 29,000 votes. She got, you know, got quite a few votes, and many people thought that those votes hurt um, Angie Craig. Is that now that she's no longer in the race, does this help or hurt Angie Craig? Hamlin Law Professor David Schultz says voters should know if they've already cast an absentee ballot and want to change it, they still can do that up to seven days before the election. And who knows how many early ballots have been cast and individuals who now may want to recast their ballot in light of the death in this race. Craig released a statement on Overby's passing saying Minnesota is better for her involvement in our community and she will be missed. Kistner announced a two-day suspension of his campaign and said this is a very sad day for Minnesota's second district. Second district voters will be spared the confusion of 2020 on whether or when a special election could be held. Secretary of State Steve Simon says this election will happen as scheduled on November 8th and that Paula Overby's name will remain on the ballot. Esme Murphy, WCCO 4 News. Paula Overby was believed to be the first transgender person to run for a federal office in Minnesota. She was 68 years old.